federal government imposed a federal backstop, they're calling it, for those provinces that do not come out with their own plan that matches or exceeds what the federal government set out. So, of course, Ontario, Saskatchewan, soon to be New Brunswick, Alberta, and a few others are saying they are not participating in this. Ontario has joined the lawsuit against the federal government's imposition of this carbon tax, so we'll see where that leads. So, basically, what is happening through the you know, the patchwork system mm -hmm. that we have going on right now is the federal government will impose a carbon tax on Ontario. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the issue that we're having as the official opposition is that more and more details that come out, we're learning that it seems to be more of a revenue plan than an environmental plan. Mm -hmm. We look at the new LNG project in British Columbia. They had to be exempt from the carbon tax in order to come up with a business plan that actually allowed them to start up and work. It was mm -hmm. a huge investment, $40 billion. However, they had to be exempt from the very environmental program that the Liberals imposed. So it goes to show you that it isn't really about curbing the large emitters, it's about actually imposing a new tax on people like commuters, soccer moms, you name it, everyday people just trying to get by. And in my riding, you look at what people heat their homes with, right? In Halliburton County, you're looking at people who heat their homes with oil, with wood, with, uh, there's not very much natural gas, so we're using electricity. And in, in Ontario, as you know, we are dealing with some of the highest energy rates anywhere in North America. So continuing to impose a new tax on top of everything else people have mm -hmm. to deal with, and not only that, now they're putting a tax on the tax. They're not eliminating the GST. So now we're paying a tax on a tax again. So clearly this is not anything to do with actually curbing emissions because what in this plan mm -hmm. stops people from do going amongst their lives it doesn't it just makes them you know less less a able to do that mm -hmm. and and in Halliburton County there is no transit they're using their cars so we're penalizing people for just living in this in this disguise that they're helping the environment and it doesn't it just makes people poor and then they'll come up with the next great government program to help those people that they harmed in the first place Having said that, why didn't they just leave the money in people's pockets if, if this mm -hmm. is going to create this? So this is the issue we're having and the debate that's going on now. Huh. Very, very interesting perspective. And, and I, I think there, there is a challenge. There's a lot of people saying, well, if we don't have cap and trade and we don't have a carbon tax, how do we move the needle on this issue? How do we create those incentives for people to use things in different ways so that we aren't creating more GHG emissions than we need to be? Well, with innovation and top technology, you can actually start moving that needle in that direction without a carbon tax. Mm -hmm. You look at Norway, they have huge oil and gas resources, not as big as Canada, but they are using it to export and fund a lot of their social programs as well as have a pretty big bank account for their future generations. But they're doing that with next to zero emissions. Mm -hmm. And how? They're using technology like carbon capture which allows the bad stuff to go right back into the ground, right? And we have the ability to use that. And I think by continuing to promote our resources here at home, which are probably the most environmentally stringent as you can get in the world, we're actually a world leader in some of these rules and regulations, that we can make the bad actors like the Saudi Arabias and the Venezuelas live up to our standard, because that leads to the next point. If we're able to export our oil to the world market, say using Energy East, which would have got Ener Alberta Energy to New Brunswick, allow us to access the European markets. Of course, Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain, which now we're all a shareholder of that. Had the government actually got behind that and actually pushed that project, we could be accessing Asian markets. And so this would have created massive opportunities, jobs and wealth for everyone along the line, as well as promoting good environmental standards right across the world and start to make these bad actors in some of these other countries live up to our standards. And I think that's a good thing.